The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, Show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else, believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And you will do greater ones than these. Before I begin, I want to also Wish all of you mothers out there a very happy and blessed Mother's Day. And all three of our gospel, or of all three of our readings today, speak of servanthood. And motherhood is, to me, the epitome of servanthood. So I thank you again for your life, your love and the nourishment you give us, not only in our faith, but in everyday life. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these. I ran across a story about how a group of Christian University students, some 40 years ago, decided to find every verse of scripture that spoke of these works that Jesus talks about and that God calls us to do. It turned out to their surprise that all related directly to issues of justice, care for the poor, the abandoned, and the neglected. To their further astonishment, they found that over 2,000 texts about this call to these works which they then cut out of the Bible. Their discovery came to be called the Bible full of holes. And as the story goes, this holy Bible is still in existence. These works that Jesus spoke of in today's gospel are pre precisely the type he did. Healing the sick, washing the feet of others, feeding the multitudes, throwing arms of forgiveness around prodigal sons and daughters. 
challenging the powers that be who are taking advantage of the downtrodden. Robert F. Kennedy wrote about these kinds of works and the ones that represent the greater ones than these that you and I can actually do in this way. He said, it is from numberless diverse acts of courage and belief that human history is shaped each time a person stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice. He or she speaks forth a tiny ripple of hope. And he goes on to say, those tiny ripples of hope crossing each other form a million of different centers of energy and daring. They will build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. Now you and I, all by ourselves, are probably not going to heal the sick in the same way that Jesus did. But we certainly can attend to the sick. You and I, by ourselves, are probably not going to raise anyone from the dead as Jesus did. But we can grieve with those who have lost a loved one. You and I, by ourselves, are probably not going to stop the horrific spread of human traffic that is such a blight on humanity. We're not going to end the terrible rise in drug addiction alone or put an end to the in income equality so many people are struggling with or find an answer to the cure of the mentally ill. But what we can do is perform those diverse acts of courage that Kennedy talked about that will enable us to stand up, to speak out, to demand an accounting. What we can do is become tiny ripples of hope that joins with others can become a current that can sweep away the mightiest walls of depression, of oppression, resistance, and evil. All three of our scripture readings today tell us of our call to go forth and serve. In the reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear of seven men who were called to serve as deacons to the widows that were being neglected. All of us are called to diakonia, which is the Greek word for service. That's why we're called deacons. We are here not only to participate in the preaching and the liturgy, but most importantly, when you see a deacon, you should be reminded of service because that should also reflect in our daily lives. Our second reading from the first letter of Peter reminds us of who we are. We are not just anybody. It tells us we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. A people of his own is the way scripture describes it. And that's because we're different. We're different from everyone else. We are his presence in the world. We are his face, his voice, his hands, and his heart. And how will people know this? By doing the works, the works that mimic the very ones Jesus does. And perhaps if each one of us asked ourselves this one question, it would help us to know what those works are that we are called to do. The question is, what in the world today most, most breaks your heart? Most offends your sense of justice? Most inspires passion within you? Who near you needs your help? 
answer the question, then trust in the words of Jesus and have courage that you can perform great works. And then as one of the, one of the ads say, just do it. <laughs>